Today we'll start talking about mass communication and mass media, and we'll try to find a range of answers to the following questions. So, do media reflect the society or do they shape it? What are their roles and responsibilities, and what is our role in those processes? So, media has a crucial role in our lives, but they can be at their worst and at their best. At their worst, media can ruin somebody's life. And one of the examples is related to Boston Marathon bombings, when a range of social media platforms incorrectly named an Indian American student as the suspect number two. He disappeared, and later he'll be found dead. Supposedly he committed suicide. But with that said, media help us understand events and trends. What is mass media? Let's try to define it. Well, first of all, mass media are industries that create and distribute the following to large numbers of people. Songs, novels, newspapers, movies, internet services, TV shows, magazines, and other products. Well, mass communication, then, it's a method of creation and the usage of symbols that conveys information and meaning to large, diverse audiences through all manners of channels. It means not only television or print media represent mass communication, Languages, Morse code, are also examples of mass communication. We can trace the historical development of media through several eras. And those eras include oral, written, print, electronic and digital. During the first two, oral and written, media existed in tribal communities. During the last three, Media became a vehicle for mass communication when something was communicated to a large group of people in contrast to the first two years when mass media did not exist as it is. During the oral era, information was spread slowly through spoken traditions by poets and teachers and storytellers. When alphabet and the written word was invented, um, culture changed and culture developed. Because there was a way to record information. However, it was really expensive and many people were not able to read. This transition from oral to written communication created a wide gap between rulers and the ruled. Because one group was highly educated and rich in contrast to the other one, illiterate and poor. This changed when Johannes Gutenberg invented movable type and the printing pre press in Germany. So if before many books were large and expensive, after the invention of the printing press, um, the size and the cost of books reduced, and they became affordable to many people, and it made books mass-produced. And the importance of books should not be under-evaluated and under-appreciated. Because they were able to spur great changes. People were able to exchange ideas and it led to resistance to authorities. Many new socio-economic classes were created because people were able to read. They were able to learn. The rise of industry changed the media landscape again. During the 1980s, farms were replaced by factories and people were moving to cities. So the shift set the stage for two final eras in mass communication, the electronic era and the digital era. In the 1840s, Telegraph made possible transmission of media messages. And um, important electronic devices were created, including film, radio, and, of course, television. But now, digital communication is the prevalent form of interactions between people.
the electronic and digital eras uh, have created the phenomenon of media convergence. And actually this term has two very different meanings. According to one of them, media convergence is the technologically merging of content in different mass media. Radio shows are available on radio and on the internet. Media convergence also refers to newspapers, broadcast and internet outlets existing under one corporate roof in order to maximize the profit and mi minimize the expenditures.